well, let me just open this guy up here. So I assume you've used resize in the past, the, the current version or one of the older versions, right? No, I have not. Oh, yeah, no? Okay. All right. But you, you get the idea. It's for oh, interpolating, sure. resizing photos, making them bigger. And you kind of get the, the limitation in the past was, you know, you kind of took one pixel and you kind of look at the pixels around it, you average it to insert a new pixel. So everything kind of gets yeah. uniformly softer. So with genuine fractals, when we came out with that, you know, years and years ago, that was a little bit better than by That was the last because, time I used it when it was genuine yeah. fractals. Yeah. Because then basically what we do is we kind of built like a, think of it like a vector framework. It was a fractal framework, but think of it like a vector framework. But you can kind of scale to any size. So at least the edges stay sharp. And then we kind of fill in the, the texture and stuff. Right. Basically, with bicubic. So it was sharper, but really not any more detail than what you get. This is totally different. So, this actually is creating new detail, creating more resolution than what you'd have before. So, I'm just going to grab a folder of photos here that I've got on my desktop. These are all pretty, pretty small ones, and I'll just drag them in here to kind of give you an idea of how it works. So, it'll open up all of those photos, shows me their original size, and then I can scale them to whatever I want to. Let's just take a look at what these look like when I blow one up. So again, these aren't very big. This is like a thousand by two thousand, mostly oh. just so you guys can see on a screen what they're going to look like different. So I'm going to blow it up a big percentage. But before I do that, let me give you kind of a quick, quick tour in here. So top tells you current photo size dimensions. This is still a beta version we're looking at. So there'll still be a few tweaks to the UI before this is, is finalized. And then below, you can choose how you want to resize it. So most people are going to kind of work in the X and Y dimensions world. They're trying to hit a certain print size. Right. Um, so that's why I've got width and height. But I could also scale by the long edge, or the short edge, or the width or height. It's kind of designed for batch processing. That way, if I need to scale a bunch of photos, it makes it easier to do that. And I can also do megapixels and percentage. I'm just going to use percentage for this one because I want to go really big. So I'm going to do a 400% increase in size here. There we go. And it'll take a second here, but you'll see as it kind of redraws oh, going yeah. from the original pixels, the original bilinear interpolation to that AI based interpolation instead. I'll kind of do a before and after here. So you can kind of see that's before, after. We'll zoom in one more step here. This is at 100. This is at 200. So this might look a little, little crazy on your screen, but you never know with the screen sharing. It kind of dithers things a little bit. So. That's the original information. Holy crap. After, just like that. Wow. We do the old swipe to reveal. You know, before, after, just like that. And that's just no additional sharpening. I haven't added anything to it. That's just the native just AI that. algorithm creating that. Yeah. And of course, wow. I can add more sharpening if I wanted to on top of that. So, yeah. It's oh, pretty darn wow. amazing what it can do. And you don't have to do anything. No, you're just no. typing in the number. Wow. You just and type in the size that you need. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. Yep. So let's say, I mean, we're doing it that way, but let's say I wanted to actually do something by dimensions. I'm trying to hit a certain size. So I could come over here and pick one of the most common photo sizes. Let's say oh, we're going to do a 16 by 20 for this right. example. Pops up the crop tool, pre primes it with the size that I'm trying to make. There we go. I can kind of recompose it the way I want to. And now it'll scale that guy up. Give it a second here for the engine to kick in. <laughs> you kind of see there's the after of going through and applying that. And, so and original oh, pixels. Point, right. Yeah. And after. So that was taking, I mean, this was a tiny image to start with. This thing was, you know, 1,000 by 2,000 pixels. We just made a 16 by 20 print out of it. That would look like that when we printed it out. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. What a great yeah. job that does. This AI stuff is just sick, isn't it's it? It's pretty crazy what it can do. I mean, it's really unlocked the things that uh, you know were impossible to do even just a few years ago. You know, a lot of technologies were kind of at the the pinnacle of what they could do, and now you can do so okay. much more than which you could back then. So. How many pictures did you throw at the AI to get it to this point? It gets trained through a million samples. I'm not sure how many total photos that is because we kind of take chunks out of multiple uh -huh. photos to do that, but it gets trained on a million samples uh, to do it. I mean, we've been about a year, Dan, on this one. All said, all said and done, yeah. At least a man year wow. of, of work on it. So, 
Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. That takes time year. to go through and build it and train it and refine it. So, you know, it's funny because it's working against everything that we've ever known about Reside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously, it's, it's, it, it, it's kind of mind blowing in that we've grown up in a lifetime of if we resize, we lose detail and we lose sharpness and you're it is always you're always giving up something mm-hmm. and and what's weird is and it's hard for me to see over zoom but it looks like it looks better than the original at a bigger size i don't know mm-hmm. if that's really what's happening or it's just what i'm seeing on my screen when you blow it up to 100 percent. but it it without any sharpening it looks sharper which is ridiculous yeah no, it definitely is. I actually find myself doing that. I'll just take the photo in that I want to work on. I'll blow it up and I'll shoot it back down to the original size just because it looks better. Just doing that. It's better than like a normal sharpening would be. Wow. It's, you know, it's effectively That's crazy. increasing the resolution of your camera. Yeah. So. It, this, is one, th- <laughs> this is one of those categories. It's like wading into a religious argument that if you, you know, wade into the, the posts on this topic um, out there, it's, it's, it can be frustrating, but at the end of the day, what we've done, and when I say it's, it can be frustrating, is that you'll see people argue from their point of perspective, their their subjective view of of adding information to a photo, and it's just you know impossible and it's sacrilegious or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, what we did as we built this thing is we literally did this Zoom stuff with Dan and multiple eye- sets of eyeballs. And we just kept saying, nope, this looks better. This looks better. Let the human eye direct us towards what looked better. And that posed a huge challenge from an engineering perspective in taking a subjective bit of feedback and making that make sense in the AI world to produce software that makes it look better. Because a computer can say something looks better through measurement, but if the human eye doesn't agree, the human eye doesn't agree. And so... Mm We've been very, very aggressive and critical of ourselves to compare it against, you know, what Adobe's doing and Topaz is doing and what we were doing with GF and all, everything out there. And so we've really tried to put the human eye on it. And so we're real close to putting this in your hands, but we'd love to get your opinion too. But we have looked at, oh my God, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images with just this group and the two or three other uh, individuals on the team to give feedback. So any and all feedback will be welcome as, as we start to put this in hands of, of guys like you, Scott. Well, I don't, I can tell you, I don't have any negative feedback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the true test will be when you throw it at your images and you stare yeah. at it and you know what you wanted that image to look like. And you remember what it looked like when you took it and all of those things, because this is, this is not, this is as much art as it is science to make right. the best in, you know, enlargement software possible. Wow. Yep. Well, I can't, yep. I can't wait to try it. That's because I, I make a lot of big prints. Uh, we have a gallery at our, our, our studios. Everything's 24 by 36. And I've just been manually doing it in, in Photoshop. And a lot of the images that we get either from people that are submitting images for a show or, uh, you know, they're, they're 2000 pixels on the long oh, edge yeah. and I'm trying to get up to 24 by 36. So <laughs> I'm stepping it up and sharpening and doing all this stuff along the way. This would, this would be the, this would be the one click solution for me having to spend, they, they there's 22 images in a show mm-hmm. and I have to resize them all it's yeah. 24 by 36 and sharpen yeah. them all individually. And, uh, and, and this is phenomenal. I mean, look See, at the that, one on screen right now with your with your split screen to the left mm-hmm. of it and to the right of it is. It looks like the the one on the right is fully processed, and the one on the uh, on the is the unsharpened raw. It looks mm-hmm. that that much better. So, and that's where this you know the workflow that we've spent a lot of energy on that you're just not going to get with other tools like this is that the output's got to be as good or better than anything out there. Period. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. But then you can layer on top of that ease of workflow, speed of workflow, convenience of batch processing, those sorts of things. So 22 images cranked out, you know, with just a few tweaks as opposed to one by one by one by one. That's how I did them. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm really anxious to get your feedback once we can get this in your hands, which will be any day now. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so like in your yeah. scenario where you have this collection of images, you want to make them all 24 inches? 
I do just take one of those photos and I'll come in here and I'll set the short edge to 24 inches. It's going to automatically calculate the other one. I just pick all those other photos and I hit sync. And now it's taken every one of those photos. It's made them all 24 inches on their short edge. The other dimension is going to flow based on whatever the proportions of the photo are. I hit the done button and I've got all my photos ready to print. Or I just hit the print button and it'll go through and print each one for me. So it's got its own print built in too. Wow. You guys are on fire. <laughs> uh, we're trying. We're yeah, busy. busy. A, I'm so. pretty sure that's a pull quote right there, Pat. I don't know. <laughs> you guys are on fire. No, as long as we're not speaking of the literal sense, because then, then well, that's but, just you know, yeah, that's bad. But you know how like like certain companies just, you know, you catch fire and everything, you know, is just you go through a magical phase where everything is, but you guys, you guys are on fire. This is phenomenal. And the, and I, I there's I I fight this battle all the time about people worrying about AI. You know, because as soon as you say AI, I, photographers are like, well, I don't want it doing my job for me and all. It's like, <laughs> this this is doing a job you can't do, <laughs> number yeah, one. Exactly. And number two is, this is not the art of photography. This is production. The mm-hmm. art. This is, and I keep Tim telling people, what AI is doing for us is it's freeing us to spend more time being creative and less time doing stuff that you could hand off to anybody. You could hand it off to an intern. I need these images resized, but I need them sharpened. I need them all to be 24 by 36. And like, that's not, that's not the art of what we do. We're not, long, we're not longing to resize stuff. Yep. That's not where the fun is. You know what this gives me time to do? Spend more time in effects because I'm not spending mm-hmm. all my time doing sharpening. And I mean, it's a, when we do a gallery show and I have to resize those images, I, it's a pain in the butt. It is literally a pain in the butt. And I'll, and sometimes I'm not happy with the results. Uh, and it's just the best I could do because of the resolution of what the file I got. And sometimes the artist actually sees it. Yeah, this is not as, didn't it blow up as well as I thought it would, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I did what I could, you know? <laughs> um, but this is, this is the, this is where we have to realize these are, these are not taking away the stuff that matters. This is replacing the stuff that doesn't matter, matters in the big picture. But it doesn't matter. In it's not taking away something where we're making a creative decision. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This isn't like style transfer where we're turning you know summer into winter or things like no, that. No, right, right, day into no. night and things like that. Yeah. Now this is this is the stuff that that you you hate doing because it's stopping mm-hmm. you from doing the stuff you love doing. And yeah. I and I love what AI does in these cases. And this is this one does it phenomenally well. Cool. Oh, well, we'd love to hear that. And we can't wait to get it in your hands. Like you yeah, I wish I could say something two. negative. I love to say negative stuff, as you know. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. but, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot when, when, when you guys send it to me. But uh, I don't really have a, a, anything but love. That's just, just amazing seeing this. I just keep looking at the picture of the left and on the right. And I'm like, holy crap, <laughs> how is that even possible? It is pretty crazy, isn't it? 